Stanley Porter's evaluation of scholarly works on the Book of Romans in the New Testament emphasises the diverse interpretive approaches in four notable commentaries, each contributing uniquely to the understanding of this significant Pauline letter. Joseph Fitzmaier's commentary in the Anchor Bible series stands out for its accessibility to those without extensive Greek knowledge, though some familiarity with the language aids in deeper comprehension. Fitzmaier is praised for his traditional theological approach and his thorough bibliographical resources. His work provides an admirable introduction to major Pauline themes, but it does not extensively engage with the newer perspectives on Paul. Porter recommends Fitzmaier's commentary as an excellent starting point for anyone new to the study of Romans, especially due to its useful summary sections. Douglas Moo's work, which is the first of a two-volume set, is grounded in a traditional reformed viewpoint, actively challenging the newer perspectives on Paul. His commentary, based on the Greek text, promises detailed syntactical analysis in its forthcoming second volume, while Porter observes that Moo's work occasionally becomes overly detailed in its verse-by-verse -verse exegesis, it is nonetheless valuable for its deep exegetical and theological insights into the text. Peter Stuhlmacher's commentary, a translation from German, focuses on the theme of God's righteousness and its implications for both Jews and Gentiles, thus accentuating the Jewish background of the letter. Special attention is given to Romans chapters 9 to 11, Designed for students and not demanding Greek proficiency, Stuhlmacher's work is organised in blocks and includes excursions into specific theological topics, keeping secondary literature references minimal. Also, Porter discusses Adolf Schlatter's classic commentary, originally published in 1935 and now translated by Hendrickson. This work, influential on Stuhlmacher as evidenced by his appreciative foreword, affirms the righteousness of God, and is best appreciated with some knowledge of Greek. In sum, Porter's review presents these commentaries as significant and diverse resources, each offering a unique lens through which to study and understand the complexities of Romans, with varying focuses on theological, exegetical elements and Greek language proficiency. Moreover, Porter's examination of the introductory literature on the Epistle to the Romans brings into focus three pivotal works that significantly contribute to the understanding and scholarly study of this Pauline letter. The foremost work Porter discusses is a revised and expanded edition of The Romans Debate. Initially published in 1977, this seminal text has established itself as an indispensable resource for anyone embarking on the study of Romans. The updated version offers a substantial increase in content effectively doubling the original material. It encapsulates a wide array of essays that delve into introductory questions pertinent to the study of Romans. Notably, this edition incorporates discussions on the new perspective on Paul, a modern theological viewpoint that has gained traction and influenced Pauline studies. The variety of scholarly opinions presented in this work makes it an essential and comprehensive reading for students and scholars beginning their exploration of the Epistle to the Romans. Another significant contribution asserted by Porter is Robert Morgan's Guide to Romans. This guide transcends the boundaries of a typical introductory text. It encompasses a concise yet informative commentary, which is the most extensive chapter of the book. Additionally, it provides an introduction to the letter's purpose, offering insights into the context and objectives behind Paul's writing. The guide also features a brief overview of Pauline theology, capturing the essence of Paul's theological perspectives. Furthermore, Morgan presents a historical account of the reception of Romans, tracing its influence and interpretation through different eras. The guide is complemented by a small, annotated bibliography, enhancing its utility as a scholarly resource. Morgan's clear intention with this guide is to bring the study of Romans in line with the latest discussions and developments in the field, making it a valuable asset for contemporary study and research on this New Testament book. Last but not least, Porter's review of various monographs on the Epistle to the Romans reveals a multifaceted scholarly landscape, each study offering a unique lens through which to view this pivotal New Testament book. Walter Wilson, in Love Without Pretense, focuses on Romans 12, 921, 
drawing parallels with Hellenistic Jewish wisdom literature. His extensive discussion on ancient maxims and gnomic statements is noteworthy, although Porter suggests Wilson's application to Romans could be more critical, often accepting others' conclusions without sufficient scrutiny. Don Garlington's work, The Obedience of Faith, contrasts themes of obedience and disobedience across various Jewish texts, dedicating a minor portion to Paul's writings. Here, Porter raises a question about the necessity of such extensive background studies, especially when the phrase central to Garlington's thesis is not evident in pre-Pauline texts. Mark Seyfried's Justification by Faith takes on the task of re-examining the concept of justification in Paul's writings, particularly in Romans. Amidst contemporary discussions, he highlights the forensic nature of this concept, challenging the new perspective on Paul, by citing texts like the Qumran document 1QS and Psalms of Solomon, which suggest a compatibility between divine mercy and obedience as prerequisites for salvation. James Walters brings an ethnic dimension to the forefront, arguing that issues of ethnicity are central to Romans. He explores the social and religious context of the period to better understand Paul's intentions, suggesting that ethnic relations heavily influenced the epistle's content and purpose. Richard Bell's examination of the jealousy motif in Romans 9.11, based on Paul's use of Deuteronomy 32, presents the idea that this motif serves as a precursor to Christ's return, aiming to provoke Israel by showcasing Gentile Christian virtues. Despite some linguistic limitations, Porter acknowledges its contribution to understanding this section of Romans. John Moores takes a unique approach, applying Umberto Eco's semiotic theory and modern rhetoric to analyse the rationality in Paul's writings. Focusing on the macro-logical structure of Romans 1.8, Moores' study, though dense, offers valuable insights into the varying interpretations of Paul's logic. Furthermore, Anthony Guerra's Romans and the Apologetic Tradition defends the epistle as a piece of protreptic literature advocating for a specific lifestyle. Porter commends Guerra for his clear and comprehensive discussion, which effectively conveys the overarching narrative of Romans. Overall, Porter's review encapsulates the diverse and rich field of biblical exegesis, indicating the complexity and depth of interpretations surrounding Paul's epistle to the Romans. In conclusion, Porter's critical evaluation of scholarly works on the Epistle to the Romans presents a multifaceted landscape of biblical exegesis, maintaining the diversity and depth of interpretations available for this significant Pauline letter. His analysis spans several notable commentaries, each offering a distinctive approach and perspective. In addition, Joseph Fitzmaier's contribution in the Anchor Bible series is lauded for its accessibility to readers with limited Greek knowledge. While it adopts a traditional theological approach and provides an extensive bibliography, Fitzmaier's commentary primarily introduces major Pauline themes, but does not engage deeply with newer perspectives on Paul. This makes it an excellent starting point for novices in Roman studies. Further, Douglas Moo's work, part of a two-volume set, is firmly rooted in a traditional Reformed viewpoint. It provides a detailed syntactical analysis, especially in the anticipated second volume, and while occasionally excessively detailed, it offers profound exegetical and theological insights. Besides, Peter Stuhlmacher's commentary, translated from German, sheds light on the theme of God's righteousness, its impact on both Jews and Gentiles, and the Jewish background of Romans, particularly in chapters 9 to 11. This work is student-friendly and organised in blocks, requiring minimal Greek proficiency. Additionally, Adolf Schlatter's classic commentary, influential on Stuhlmacher and now translated, reiterates God's righteousness and benefits from some Greek knowledge for a full appreciation. Also, the revised and expanded edition of The Romans Debate, a seminal work first published in 1977, doubles its original content providing a comprehensive collection of essays on introductory questions to Romans, including discussions on the new perspective on Paul. Moreover, Robert Morgan's Guide to Romans transcends typical introductory texts by offering a concise commentary, insights into the letter's purpose, and a historical account of its reception, 
accompanied by an annotated bibliography. Finally, various monographs, such as Walter Wilson's Love Without Pretense, Don Garlington's The Obedience of Faith, and Mark Seyfried's Justification by Faith, each contribute unique lenses to view and interpret the complexities of the epistle to the Romans. Porter's review, thus, repeats the rich array of scholarly interpretations and approaches, illuminating the depth and complexity of this foundational New Testament book.